G'day guys, I told you last night or this morning I would see you on the other side of the grand final and here I am and what a grand final it was. Collingwood are the premiers for the 16th time in their history after uh, yeah, one of the best grand finals of the modern era. Like, I'm a little bit biased in this because I know West Coast has been involved in what I would consider two of the best grand finals in 18 and 06 as well and there's also 05. So I'm a little bit biased as to where that actually ranks but it's got to be buddy close. So it's probably in the mix there with you know Sydney and Hawthorne in 12, um, the drawn grand final as well, all of these great grand finals. Um, it was another example of that. The Pies get the job done by four points. Uh, it looked like they had the game iced but for a late goal there to Joe Danaher. A um, few of my predictions were a little bit off for this game. As you'd expect, they were kind of wild predictions to begin with. One of my predictions was that Danaher was going to have a wayward day in front of goal, but he was actually really good, really important for him. It's not that I don't rate Danaher, I just randomly tipped him to have a wayward day in front of goal, but he was very accurate. But for the Pies, this caps off uh, a season where they could justifiably be crowned the best team in the league. Absolutely, they were unreal this year. Brisbane also would have been very, very worthy premiers. So it was that's what you want to see in a grand final where either team could justifiably win the premiership and you think, yeah, they were the best team this year. And th this was one of those games. Whoever won that game was deserving of the premiership. So first of all, a heartfelt congratulations to uh, all the Pies fans that uh, support both the Pies and this channel as well. You're much appreciated and I'm, I'm genuinely happy for you. It's been 13 years since your last one. Um, but yeah, it's crazy to think Collingwood are now level with Carlton and Essendon on 16 and they're the best place out of those three. Potentially, depends on what, how you rate Carlton, but arguably the best place to be the first team to 17. It's been a long race for the 17. Yeah, Craig McRae's just pulled off uh, an amazing first two years at the club. Obviously, they ebbed and flowed, uh, to say the least, uh, towards the back end of the Buckley era there. 2019 should have made the grand final, but they let that one slip. 2020, they won an elimination final. 21, they the ass fell out of the club, but just for a year. And that's the impressive thing about this Collingwood side, the regeneration between the 2018 to now. It's pretty significant. There's a lot of new star talent in that team, um, but also a lot of that same young core that we saw back in 2018. One of these new talents that they've brought in is Bobby Hill, uh, which in hindsight is a wonderful trade from GWS. Obviously, I think the year before that, he was was he poised to go to Essendon? I think that's what it was, and then ended up being held to his contract, stayed an extra year, plays a year at Collingwood, and has a pretty damn good year, but that was his best performance at AFL level. Uh, really impressive, very deserving Norm Smith medalist. Clear choice. I'm really glad he won it, to be honest. Um, but, you know, four goals, 18 possessions, but not only that, just the amount of chains that I saw him involved in that um, ended up in something positive for Collingwood, not so much just his goals. That was that was the impressive part. It was a very complete small forward performance from Bobby Hill, so congratulations. Commiserations to the Lions fans on here. I know there are a few. Um, tough game to lose, to be honest. You don't need me to tell you that. That that would have been heartbreaking. Um, and particularly at the end, you know, look, the elephant in the room, there was a contentious uh, umpiring decision towards the end. And yeah, that umpire made a howl off that Lockie Neal trip that shouldn't have been paid advantage. Do I think that would have resulted in a goal? I don't know. I think Collingwood would have flooded the back line and, um, you know, it probably wouldn't have changed the result. But that is just one man's opinion, which isn't worth anything. So really unlucky there. But it'd be heartbreaking for, you know, a number of players, actually on both sides. Uh, obviously, uh, for the Lions, he, every player is heartbroken right now. Some aging stars in that team as well, or t players at least sort of getting into to the twilight of their careers. Maybe not a lot, but I'm thinking of like Lockie Neal and Dane Zorko for a start. And then the, on the other side, there's there's heartbreaks for you know the winners as well. Um, you saw Taylor Adams' re uh, reaction. He was bawling his eyes out on the siren. Um, Dan McStay obviously didn't play. He would have probably felt very uncomfortable with uh, the way this game went, in the sense that he obviously would still have some connection to, to Brisbane. So also having not played, that would have been weird for him. I think of Nathan Murphy, subbed out in the first quarter with a concussion, looked ejected on the bench. That's heartbreaking. Still technically a premiership player, but you know I'm sure he would have much preferred to be out there when the final siren went. John Noble's another player who out as well and I'm sure we can think of more you know you can think of Brody Grundy as well who's only one year removed from that footy club so it's a bittersweet sort of day for everyone that is the beauty of grand finals very bittersweet there's a harsh dichotomy between those two concepts but what an entertaining grand final I couldn't be more grateful I woke up uh, obviously this morning at five I didn't sleep well and uh, I didn't vlog um, sorry I considered vlogging I slept about an hour and a half I reckon not a good sleeper uh, but I got up and even though it was nine degrees in Macclesfield still dark outside and the game was starting the game was 
so much more fun than most of the last few grand finals, certainly better than last year's. So even though I was just sat by my couch by myself, um, waiting for my eggs to cook while I watched this game before breakfast, I was thoroughly entertained and I'm grateful for that. It was an outstanding grand final. Some really good individuals in this game. Yeah, like I said, Bobby Hill uh, for the winners. Um, for the losers, uh, Kitty Coleman, geez, he played an outstanding first half. 600 metres gained at half time. He's backed that up after a strong prelim. Yeah, he was given a little bit of a licence and given a lot of freedom and space, I think, from Collingwood, but still had a massive impact on the game. Um, Zach Bailey's two goals for oh, that. I think it was his second goal. That reminded me of Dugowie's goal um, early in the 2018 Grand Final. Of course, that's where a lot of my references come from. I've watched that game a million times. Probably even better. Really good, desperate defensive effort and then snap over his shoulder. Outstanding. You know, there's. I, I hate to pick on people and I do like Jared Berry as a player, but you do think of these sliding doors moments and when that steel side bottom goal from 55 out, that was, well, it was the winning goal in the end because uh, that was the last goal Collingwood kicked and before Danaher got one back. And you take out that side bottom goal and suddenly Jared Berry's 50 meter penalty that he gave away on the wing um, is looking very very costly that's the word I'm looking for um, and that wasn't his only 50 meter penalty of the day I think Jared Berry had a day he'd like to get back he did a cool spin move to send the ball forward before Charlie Cameron's goal so you know that was good and bad but geez that was it's hard to get out of my mind that 50 meter penalty but yep the game ebbed and flowed similar to how I expected Collingwood did get the fast start um, to go he kicked that goal in a quarter time make it 10 points and at each point I did expect Collingwood to sort of nudge away a little bit to, but to Brisbane's credit they uh, they really held with them it was four uh, six points at half time then four points at three quarter time so so Brisbane won quarters two and three, which was my prediction, and Collingwood won the first quarter. Obviously, I got most of my predictions wrong, but uh, the technically, the ebb and flow of the game went as expected, and then it was obviously Collingwood who got the better of the last term, um, which is what I didn't predict. I predicted a Lions win, but it could have gone either way. Literally, just you take out that steel side bottom goal, and we have a different premier, and uh, yeah, it's crazy scenes. One thing I'll say is that watching the game, I do think Collingwood was comfortably, not maybe not comfortably, but they were definitely the better side in this game. Um, I think the composure in those tough moments is what set the two teams apart. Bear in mind, Collingwood kicked, what, 12 goals, 18 in this game, left a few goals. By comparison, Brisbane were pretty clinical in front of goal. Where Brisbane were pretty poor, I thought, was at times, and this is really harsh for a grand final, but in the second half, there were times where Brisbane would sort of get a knock on and they'd have players overlapping and there'd be free space and then the player would just inexplicably drop the ball or fumble it. And there, were, there was moments in that second half where I looked at it and I was like, that doesn't look like a team that's about to win the premiership. And I'm sure if you go back and look at all grand finals, you'll find examples of the winning team doing stuff like that. But it didn't feel like fatigue. It felt like Brisbane, at times, just couldn't take hold of the moment. And that is ultimately what cost them. Because there were times where Collingwood gave them opportunities. There were turnovers in the corridor, the middle of the ground. And Brisbane would grab the ball and then fumble it. And from that point of view, it was frustrating. But I wouldn't say it was a low standard game. It was a really good game between two really good sides that we're both deserving of a premiership. But of course, it's Collingwood that claimed their 16th premiership. So once again, congratulations to all you fans. Um, thanks for sticking fat with the channel as well this year. Like I said, there's going to be more content coming. And shout out to Swoop Luke. I'm sure he's not watching this. He's got better things to do tonight. But uh, he is a bloke I thought of a lot, um, you know, this week when he's put up an Insta story of him uh, bawling his eyes out at the final time siren. So I looked at that and I thought that is exactly what I was doing in 2018. So um, can't help but feel a little bit jealous, but uh, I'm curious, like, did he enjoy the game for the most part? Did did Pies fans enjoy the game? I'm curious to know how this game went for you because it would have been uncomfortable for me if it had been my team. But anyway, guys, thanks for that. Thanks for a great season. Um, like I said, it's going to keep going with the channel for a little bit longer yet. Um, let me know your thoughts and comments on the game that was. It was an outstanding grand final and I uh, look forward to reading them a little bit later on. But for now, I'm going to get some sleep. I have not slept and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.